Hello again. In this uh, race coordinator tutorial, we're going to talk about all the different options you have when you're configuring an actual race. Um, every property we'll get through. We'll get through as many as we can in this one, and because of a 10-minute time constraint, um, we'll pick it up in another in a part two or part three as as needed. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the race wizard, and I'm going to walk through basically every property one at a time and talk to them, talk about them at a very high level, not not terribly in depth, but enough so that you get an idea for all the different things you can do with race coordinator um, in terms of the race configuration. Um, later tutorials we'll get into the more specifics of how to actually set up specific race formats that you're looking for um, using specific properties and how to configure them. This is just going to talk about them in a very high level, what each property means and and sort of the side effects and what they affect. So um, let's get right to that. Um, as I said, I'm going to use the wizard and I'm the race wizard. And I'm just going to walk right through it. Um, all of this goes. Uh, all of all of what I'm about to talk about stands for the management screen as well. Um, it's just laid out slightly differently, and and I like the way this one's laid out because you could pause it and read the text if you'd like, and and compare it to what I'm saying now and things like that. So. Um, so we're just going to start with the general setup for the race wizard and talk about the race name. Um, that's just the name of the race. It's how you identify a race. Um, it has to be unique across all races within Race Coordinator. Um, you can display it in the race day setup screens, and that's about it. Um, you can name it anything you want. There's a tip down here. Sometimes it's useful to um, name your race based on it. You know, um, stock T-Jets, three-minute heats um, would be a good one. You know, if you're going to race stock T-Jets for three-minute heats. Um, you could give it a you know an RR for round robin. You could give it you know whatever you want. Um, then then comes the track property. Um, this is just specifying what track the race will run on, um, which in turn, um, which in turn dictates how many lanes there are, the lane lengths, things like that. Um, things like lane length you know see one of the track tutorials, but the lane length only determines if you're displaying miles per hour and things like that, it'll, you know, it needs the lane length to do the calculations, but the, the real important thing is the track interface um, that comes along with the track data and how many lanes there are, because how many lanes there are will determine the heat rotation. Car filter is a somewhat um, un incomplete um, property within the race. It, is, it, it allows you to specify, it allows you to limit the number of cars you can, the, the cars you can add to a driver um, in the race day setup. Um, basically the car type is used to fill in this field, this this pull down box so you can see I've, I've created car types of Mega G, SG Plus, Shelf Queen, Unlimited. If you go into the car management screen you can see each one of those cars. Unlimited is a default one, you get that for everything and it means you can you can use assign any car. That's all it really does right now. Um, later on it may, may do other things but for right now that's what it's for. Um, it's just a way to help you filter your cars out if you wanted to run T-Jets only and you wanted to assign T-Jets to your drivers, um, you can filter out all of your other cars. Um, the minimum lap time is a very important property. It is the minimum lap time that Race Coordinator will accept as a legitimate lap. It defaults to one second. Um, depending on your types of cars you're racing, the, la the lane length and whatnot, you'll want to adjust this um, as needed, but you want to basically to be the lowest value, the highest value possible, knowing that no car could ever possibly reach that lap time. So if you know that no car on your track will ever do a three second lap, but it might do a 3.2 second lap, then a, a good time for, for the minimum lap time would be three seconds. And what will happen is any lap that comes in under the minimum lap time is just rejected by race coordinator and it'll wait for the next lap and it'll just accumulate all the time until you, until you get a lap that is above the minimum lap time. It's useful if cars hop hop onto the uh, somebody else's lane and cross the, you know, the, the finish, start finish line or if a car crashes over the start finish line cutting over half the track, if a um, track marshal puts the car down in the wrong spot on the track and you get a, you know, a really short lap out of it. Um, it's it's just something that you should set up and you should consider. By default, it sets it up to one. You could technically set it up to zero. However, um, if depending on your sensor type, for example, IR sensors will that may cause problems because it will not reject any lap times basically, and the infrared sensor may see through the car in some places depending on the the body of the car and things like that. So keeping it to at least you know one second or something. I mean you. you can't imagine anybody racing out there with a one second lap time, but you could even do 0.5 if you need to or whatever, but non-zero is definitely recommended here. Um, that's all the general setup stuff. The general setup in the, wi in the wizard is simply just a, a lumping of, of stuff that I didn't really know where else to put it, basically. So um, 
that brings us to the heat setup um, and the rotation types. Race coordinator supports every kind of rotation you could ever possibly imagine. Um, literally, when I say anything, I mean you literally can do anything you want. Um, it does provide custom set or it provides a, a set of stock settings so that you can just click on a button and get them. And I'll go over those in a second. But it also provides two different ways of doing custom rotations. Um, and, and again, I'm going to talk about those right now. So we're going to go down this one by one. Um, a practice race practice race rotation means that it is a practice race. Practice races are very special on race coordinator. Um, there is no winner or loser in a practice race. The seating coming into the race is the same seating going out of the race. In fact, there are no, there are no lane assignments whatsoever. Um, drivers, it's a free-for-all on the track. Um, you can come and go as you please. Um, there's even, race coordinator provides a special race day screen that allows you to clear the lane data so you can just wipe out laps, you can do whatever you want. It's clearly meant for tuning your car, tuning your driving, getting used to the track, those things that happen before the real race begins. Um, the next race is what we call a round robin. Now, round robin is a semi-bad term. Really, this should probably read standard round robin. Um, round robin is a generic term, meaning um, every driver in the race races on every single lane on the track and there is some rotation around uh, the heats to a certain whatever kind of rotation to accomplish that. Um, in this case a standard round robin which is what this is simply means that each driver starts out on a lane and shifts one lane over to their to their left or right depending on how you organize the lanes but one lane over and then each heat and as you get to the end of the line you come back to the beginning if you haven't done it and that happens over and over again until Every racer has raced on every lane, so it's a pretty simple standard round, uh, standard format. Many races will use this format. Um, in fact, it is the default. Um, race coordinator comes with a race setup exactly this way. It's a default configuration, and again, it's a very common race format. Um, European round robin is a, similar to round robin, only it tries to um, keep the drivers from racing next to each other all the time, so it's not a straight one lane over um, type of round robin format, it will allow you to uh, um, sort of vary what lanes you're on next and things like that. Um, again, another it's another very popular format, um, and race coordinator supports it just by single clicking on it. Um, the next format down is a custom round robin. Now, this is the first of the custom fields, um, and it's a very important one in that it allows you to specify over here um, a sequence of lane data. And what I'm going to do is, unfortunately for time, I'm going to skip this one for now, and we'll talk about it later um, in a very specific one. But it'll allow you to set up a round robin and allow you to do whatever sort of um, shuffling you want to do. And we'll talk about that again, like I said, later um, in a different tutorial. Um, single lane race format. This is a in which um, every driver races on one and only one lane. It is useful for... Um, um, but there are multiple drivers on in each heat, so uh, typically when you use this, this format, you will allow the drivers to select their lanes, perhaps. Um, race coordinator will auto-assign the lanes based on seating, but you may want to let the highest seated driver pick their lane, then let the next highest pick their lane, etc., etc. Um, they will only run in one heat, and that heat value is what they get. That's all there is to it. Excuse me. Single lane solo is the same thing, only this in this case they run in one heat only, um, but they can run on, they run by themselves, and they are assigned one and only one lane to race on. Again, you can change the lane at the start of the race, uh, or at the start of the heat they're in, um, if you're going to allow them to pick whatever lane, or race coordinator will assign them to the first lane on the track. Single lane, solo, any lane is the same thing again. Again, they only run in one heat on a single lane, but, or by themselves, because it's solo, um, but they can race on any lane on the track, and they can just pick up their car and move over one, you know, a lane anytime they want to at any point. These are typically good for speed races if you're trying to get as fast as you can um, and, and race by best time. Custom rotation is the free-for-all. You can set up anything you want. You create up custom files, and you can do any race format you could possibly think of. No kidding. Absolutely no holds bar. You can put... You can have racers drive on the same lane twice in, di in two different heats. You can have them drive in three. You can unbalance it so one driver can race five times and one driver can race four times. Whatever you want to do. Um, again, we'll do a, another tutorial that explains that in more detail. Um, but for this tutorial, I'm running out of time, so I'm going to stop here, and we'll go on to the next one in just a bit.